It is 10 a.m. here in Atlanta, 6 p.m. in Abu Dhabi. I'm Linda Kincaid, in for Becky Anderson. Good to have you with us and welcome to Connect the World. Well, competitions and sports can bring out the best and sadly the worst in us. In the case of the Italy celebrations with England, uh, we are seeing scenes of joy and national pride from Italian fans. But England is hanging its head in shame, not because it lost the championship on, penalty, on a penalty shootout, but because of the conduct of some English fans. In the wake of the game, thousands of racist and offensive social media messages have attacked three English players who missed their penalty kicks. Prime Minister Boris Johnson in the UK and Prince William have been among those who've loudly condemned the racist attacks. And even before the game started, there were ugly scenes at Wembley Stadium as English fans who do not have tickets tried to break the gates and get into the stadium. London police reported that 50 arrests were carried out. We are covering both sides of the story. Our Barbie Nadeau is with us from Rome and CNN World Sport contributor Darren Lewis is at Wembley Stadium in London. Uh, good to have you both with us. I'll start with you, uh, Darren. Uh, because after all the excitement uh, that came from England finally making it to this uh, to this final, the disappointment in losing quickly turned to anger, to, to hatred, and largely targeted at three young, gifted black players. Yeah, absolutely. The, the funny thing is, Linda, their ability is almost immaterial. If you are black and you exist in this society you are a target we are a divided divided nation here in britain and if you're black or you're brown if you're doing well you're english if you're doing badly you're black you're another and what we've seen over the last what 18 hours or so is almost a crystallization if you like of the racism that is well documented lots of examples lots of statistical evidence to suggest it exists, but now you're seeing it in black and white. It's repulsive, it's vile, but it's necessary for the world to see the scale of the problem that exists in this country. I mean, it really is disgusting, and we obviously are seeing it not only online, we've also seen murals uh, depicting like one of one of the key players uh, that was completely defaced there, that, that of course uh, in Manchester. Uh, just explain for us, uh, what the broader problem is. You touched on it just briefly, Darren. This isn't just an issue uh, regarding three players in, in this final. This is a, a bigger problem. And uh, even the, the, the Prime Minister has come under attack for not stamping out this out. Yeah, well, on a very basic level, the Prime Minister has come out today and he's issued uh, what could be only described not really as condemnation as such, but a bit of a finger wagging at the people who have issued these uh, racist remarks, if you like, for want of a better term. Here's the thing. The Prime Minister of this country himself has made racially offensive uh, gestures, if you like. He, he's come out with the kind of thing that you or I would find repulsive in our viewers as well. And his Home Secretary is in the middle of a hostile environment targeting black and brown people, making life difficult for black and brown people. So it kind of sticks in the craw when the Prime Minister tries to rebuke people when they are making racist remarks. And here's another thing as well. At the start of this tournament, Linda, the players took the knee as they are doing on the other side of the Atlantic because they are trying to highlight racial injustice in this country. They were booed by their own fans. When comment was sought by, uh, from the Prime Minister on the issue, he refused to condemn them. His language was very much in the Donald Trump, very bad people on both sides. It doesn't help the situation. What it does instead is empower the people who want to target young black men. So when the government come out with the kind of language that emboldens the racism, how can we be surprised when there is racism? Over in Italy, it's a source of national pride, the events of the last 24 hours. Over here in the UK, it's a source of national shame. Yeah, it, it certainly, uh, I want to go to Barbie because it, obviously this has overshadowed the outcome, uh, something that is a huge success story uh, for Italy. This is the first time they've won the European Championship since 1968. 
That's absolutely right. And, you know, the energy and enthusiasm and passion of the Italian people last night was just incredible. It was contagious. The city of Rome erupted. Every city, every small hamlet erupted with national pride. Now, we talked to a couple of fans. They were dissecting not just what got them to this point, but what they're going to do in the years to come when it comes to playing this beautiful game. Let's listen. Joy. It reminds us of 2006 when we beat France and in the penalty shootout. After 15 years, the penalty shootout is always more beautiful, magnificent. You know, and that sort of enthusiasm and, you know, soccer, football here is just so much part of the DNA. And we really saw that, especially after these last 18 months when Italy has suffered so much with the pandemic. You know, this tournament kicked off here. People were wondering if it was a good idea to do it in front of a live audience or not. But it, it was a success and they brought it all full circle home. And you feel for the first time in such a long time here, Linda, a sense of pride, a sense of optimism, looking towards the future. And that goes far, far beyond just the game. Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, those scenes of jubilation, always wonderful to see. Uh, we will speak to both of you again, our Barmina Dofres in Rome, Darren Lewis uh, outside Wembley Stadium. Thank you both very much.